The absence of pain with a stone does not mean the stone is gone. This is super important. Stay tuned, let's talk about why. Hey guys, Dr. Seigel here. So the question is, woohoo, I had a stone, my pain is gone, the stone's gone, right? I must have passed it. Tons of people that think that this is what's happening when the pain goes away with the stone, but it's not always. And it's important to know that because I'm going to give you a pearl at the end, if you guys stay tuned until then, as to why this concept that the stone may still be there, even though you don't have pain, is important for your permanent kidney health. Okay, so please stay tuned to the end to listen to that pearl of wisdom. So when somebody has a stone, so let's look at this schematic here. This is the stone in the ureter. Just to review, this is the kidney. This is the tube that drains urine from the kidney down to the bladder. This is called the ureter, all right? So this stone is stuck in there, and the back pressure on the kidney makes people in excruciating pain. Women say sometimes the pain associated with the stone is worse than the pain associated with natural childbirth, just to let you know how painful it can be. So oftentimes, we'll see somebody that came from the ER, they'll have this obstructive stone here. The ER will send them to us, and the patient says, Doc, I'm not in pain anymore. I must have passed this thing. I don't even know why I'm here. But oftentimes, they haven't. This is the phenomenon that happens over time with stones. So urine comes in the bladder actually via some blood vessels. Okay, so the blood gets filtered. The kidney is kind of the grand filtration system. Uh, for the whole body so the blood will come in here to the kidney that blood gets turned into urine when it gets turned into urine then it runs down the ureter and when a stone gets stuck here that urine can't pass that stone and that back pressure on the pin kidney is very uncomfortable as a lot of you probably come to realize what happens over time is this blood flow goes down so when you have an obstruction here the body quits feeding blood to this kidney. And that's really bad because your kidney depends on blood flow to stay strong, to stay healthy, to stay viable. So when you have an obstruction here, the blood flow will go down. This blood flow goes down. So less urine is running through the ureter. Less urine is running through the kidney into the ureter. And you have less urine running through there, there's less back pressure on the kidney. When there's less back pressure on the kidney, you have less pain. So somebody will not feel pain anymore, but the phenomenon that's happening is that you're getting less blood flow to the kidney. And that's a big problem because we want blood flow to get to the kidney to promote good kidney health. So that's one possibility. And we'll talk about kind of that at the end is why that's really important. The other possibility is that these stones, um, they're like, a dice that you're rattling around in the ureter if you look at this stone right here this stone is what we call impacted all right that means it's stuck in that ureter it's actually pushing on the side of the ureter uh, but what these stones can do is they can move to what's called a partially obstructive location so instead of being really stuck in there it can kind of let's let's draw it on this side here with a black marker it can kind of move to a location that's only halfway obstructive, right? There's still a little, what we call conduit or a little channel for urine to run past the stone. If that's the case, you're not gonna have that as much back pressure on the kidney. And when you have less back pressure on the kidney, you're gonna have less pain. So if a stone moves to a partially obstructive location, it's still there, but the pain's gonna dissipate. It's gonna get better, okay? So that could be one reason why your pain goes away. Um, after you had an obstructive stone. The other possibility is where are all these stones hopefully end up, end up, right? We want them to end up to the outside world, but they have to go to the bladder. So sometimes if the bladder is down here, these stones will be rattling around in the bladder. So they've essentially passed the ureter, gone into the bladder, and that's one reason why the stone is still present in the urinary system, but not painful because when the stone is in the bladder, uh, it's like being in the sink of the body and it's not obstructing the flow of urine from the kidney. So your pain goes away. So that could be one reason why uh, 
you don't have pain anymore with the stone. And that's a good thing because usually when it gets into the bladder, guess what? It's going to exit the body. It's going to go to the outside world. The idea is that if you can pass all the way through this thin tube called the ureter, uh, it can go into the bladder and then go through the urethra because the urethra is usually much bigger than the size of this ureter. You could have passed it and didn't know it. That is a possibility, especially with small stones. Some of these small stones are like gravel. They're like sand-like particles. And during a bowel movement or um, at night or you're just not paying attention, there can be like a little clink in the toilet. That's the stone that's passed. So that is a possibility. You could have passed it and not known, and that's a great circumstance. But this is the reason why what we call serial imaging is so, so important. Serial imaging is imaging that's done after the initial uh, image that's diagnosed you with a stone. So you go to the ER, they say you got a stone, you see us, you see me, and I say, we have to get imaging over time even though your pain's better because we wanna make sure that it, this stone is gone because all the reasons that I said could be reasons why your pain is gone, okay, but the stone's still there. And this is the pearl at the end that I want you guys to understand because it's so important for your overall kidney health and can potentially result, result in permanent kidney damage if you don't keep seeing the urologist and get the serial imaging. If over time, this kidney blood flow goes down and down and down because of an obstructive stone, your pain is gonna go away, but that stone is still may be obstructed. And I've seen cases where that stone's obstructive, the pain goes away, the kidney blood flow goes down, and now this kidney is not getting blood flow sometimes for months years and they'll see me or they'll see one of us and we'll notice that this kidney is almost not functional or minimally functional having said that if the patient had come back okay and seen us and we had gotten serial imaging imaging over time to see whether that stone was there we could have fixed it got rid of the obstruction done a procedure to get rid of it so getting serial imaging following up with your urologist over time is kind of the biggest pearl of wisdom that i want you to know especially if you feel like the stone has passed because it might not have and that can result in permanent kidney damage if we're not careful about it so that's hopefully that gives you some insight as to why your pain may be gone uh, after you've had an obstructive stone, but the stone may still be there. Thank you so much for listening to us. We certainly appreciate it. Please subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot, guys.